Good afternoon and welcome to Curry Talks. I'm David Montero and this is the program where members of the Curry community learn more about each other. Today we will be looking into the study abroad program here at Curry. Today's guest is Kelsey Merrill. She is a junior here at Curry. She's in the nursing program and she has studied abroad in France. Welcome Kelsey. Thank you. Now you studied at St. Francis University in Ambiole um, in France. Can you please tell me a little bit about what your average day was like? Um, so when we got there, it was beautiful. Um, we woke up around 8 o'clock, 9, whenever, um, and you had breakfast, and then we had class in the morning. When, after class, we had a little bit of a free time. Then we had lunch. We ate at the Priory, which was where we were staying. Um, then we would go out and on like adventures during the afternoon we would have people come in and talk to us or go into Albi which was a bigger um, town mm -hmm. yeah. so then dinner sounds like a fun day yeah. now I know you studied health policy and finance um, can you tell me a little bit about the courses that you took yes yeah, so it was one class three credits and we learned about our healthcare system in the United States as well as different healthcare systems in um, France, Germany, Canada, things like that. I've learned, um, like you said, that you spent some time in Canada. Um, could you tell me some of the differences between studying um, way out in France and somewhere closer like Canada? Yeah, so in France you're really able to submerge yourself in the culture, which was awesome, versus Canada is like the border of where I live in Maine, where it's close to home so I was able to kind of disconnect from the United States and um, really just like focus on what I was studying and the culture around me. That's cool. Your classes um, they were south of France mm -hmm. but you also got a chance to travel to Paris. Can you tell me about that? Paris was amazing. Um, it was a, the complete opposite of where we were staying in Ambule, which was all like farm and country, versus the city in Paris. So you were able to see the two different cultures and the way that Parisians acted in the south of France and in Paris. Wow, yeah, I bet Paris was an amazing time. It was beautiful. Now, what is the difference between taking a class here um, at Curry in a classroom and taking a class in France? So the whole class setup was different for us. We really focused on like sitting in a circle and having group discussions instead of doing classwork and things like that. Um, so it was more of like a hands-on experience. Wow, yeah, I, I bet. I bet there's a lot of differences. Yeah. Um, now, Ned Bradford is part of the faculty that um, organizes the study abroad trips. Mm -hmm. Um, how can students reach out to him and what advice would you give a student who is debating um, on deciding whether they want to do study abroad or not? Yeah, so you can find Ned on the Curry website and any advice I would say is do it. Everyone that asks me about the friendship, I say you have to go um, like find a way because submersing yourself in that culture was a once in a lifetime experience and it was really fun. Yeah, I can only imagine how fun a trip to France could be. Now, if you were to do another study abroad trip, where do you think you would go next and why? Probably Australia. I don't know why, but I like Australia. <laughs> yeah, Australia. That would be a really nice trip out there. But, um, so, um, anyway, um, what would you say was your best experience in France? Um, I really liked going and seeing the nursing homes and the nursing schools. We were able to see two different nursing schools and learning about their like program versus our program was amazing. Like they only do three years and they don't have to do specialties yeah. versus our program. We do have to do specialties mm -hmm. and it's four years. Wow. Well, it was really great to hear from you today, Kelsey, um, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn about your trip to France and um, your study abroad opportunity. Um, if anyone is interested in studying abroad, they can go to the study abroad office in the Learning Commons and gather some more information on their next trip. 
Um, thank you, Kelsey. Thank um, you. I'm David Montero, and please join me for another edition of Curry Talks. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Curry Talks. I'm Dom Manna and this is the program where members of the Curry community learn more about each other. Today's guest is Sean Connors. Sean is the intramurals coordinator here at Curry and he is here to teach us more about the program that he runs and how to get involved. Welcome Sean. Thank you. So I know you just graduated from Salem State University in May. Correct. So how have you um, adjusted so quickly to being a full-time coordinator here at Curry? Yeah, so I was really fortunate uh, at Salem State to be able to work pretty extensively in our campus rec department. Uh, I worked as an intramural official and eventually an intramural supervisor. I was able to work on our fitness center floor and I was also able to do office work um, with our intramural department, which I think is an opportunity that not really a lot of student employees get to do. So that sort of gave me a leg up to go into this field. A lot of the stuff that I was able to do my senior year, which was last year, uh, has sort of carried over. So it hasn't been sort of as big of an adjustment as maybe it would be for somebody else. So I've been pretty comfortable here in my role so far. That's awesome. So intramurals is open to all students here on campus. Right. So why would you encourage students to get involved? Yeah, so I think there are a couple different aspects to intramural sports that maybe not everybody thinks of. Um, so first of all, there's the competitive aspect. So people who played high school sports or played competitive sports when they were younger, um, it's an opportunity to do that again, to try to win, to build your team, to build your dynasty, as uh, some people like to say. Um, there's also the recreational side of it, um, which is obviously sort of the goal of our campus rec department is to provide our students with um, just a place where they can go to relax, to do something that they enjoy doing and to have fun. And then lastly, there's the social side of it. So there are a lot of things that you can do on a college campus and most of them are social. Um, intramural sports is no exception there. Um, even if you're somebody who maybe struggles to make friends, um, if you join an intramural team, you're going to be forced to be on a team, um, which requires teamwork. And um, you'll be able to talk to your teammates, you'll be able to talk to the other team, you'll be able to meet us as an intramural staff. So I think sort of all of those things together make intramurals a, a good program for just about anybody on campus. Yeah, intramurals is a great program. So let's get into some of the intramurals here on campus. I know um, flag football, softball, and basketball are some of the big ones, but can you tell us about some of the other like newer ones that have been offered? Right, yeah. So I think our main staples are flag football, softball, basketball, volleyball, and indoor and outdoor soccer. Um, but we've had new ideas for potentially running kickball, maybe dodgeball, um, and then it's definitely worth mentioning that we also host eSports tournaments. Um, so this semester so far we've had Madden and we've had FIFA. Um, next semester I believe we're planning to run an NBA 2K tournament. Um, we run all of those on the PlayStation 4 and eSports um, is sort of growing as a field and we want to be sort of on the front lines with that um, and offer our students a good chance. So when we're sort of evaluating a a new sport idea. Um, we have to look at a couple things. We have to say, is it realistic to be able to train our officials to be able to officiate that sport? Um, we have to say, do we have the field or the necessary court time to be able to run it? Um, what's the equipment cost? Is it safe? Um, and so, you know, there are a lot of aspects that you have to sort of consider when suggestions come your way. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of great stuff coming from the intramural department. So there employ students there through the intramural department and in the rec department. So can you tell me a little bit about the job responsibilities for your employees at intramurals and um, basically just how they can apply? Yeah, um, for sure. So as an intramural official, which is our entry level position, we have our officials and then you can work your way up to be a manager. Those are the people that you'll see um, at our games keeping score. Um, for an official, your responsibilities are obviously officiating the games, um, but there's really no prior experience that you need in, able to be order, in order to be able to do this. Um, 
We will train all of our officials so that they are comfortable. We try to put our, all of our officials in positions that they will be comfortable in. Some take to certain sports quicker than others, as is the case with any job, really. Um, and it can be a difficult job, I won't lie to you. Um, some of our more competitive sports, for sure, um, you know, it can be difficult to referee basketball or flag football, but, you know, there are also times where you'll be doing some of the more non-competitive sports, and it can be, it can definitely be fun. I myself officiate um, yeah. sports, so. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on today, Sean. It was great having you. I hope we can have you on again. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Um, and as always, I'm Don Manna, and please join us for another edition of Curry Talks. Good afternoon and welcome to Curry Talks. My name is Brendan Clay and this is the program where members of the Curry community learn more about each other. Today's guest is Clint Wilson. He is a student here at Curry and is in his junior year. Clint is an accounting major and communication major here at Curry. He's here to talk about the lacrosse team and the upcoming season. Welcome, Clint. Thank you. Nice to be oh, here. Yeah. Uh, what was it about Curry that first caught your eye and made you want to come here uh, initially? So at the time, I was a junior going to be a senior in high school, and I was seen by Coach Murphy at a tournament up in Albany, New York. And at the, I was looking into the United States Merchant Marine Academy. Mm -hmm. I was in the application process there at the time, and that's where I'd been planning on going. And it ended up in the April of my senior year, I found out I was not able to pass the physical, mm -hmm. the Dobmer, which is required to be in the military. Yep, yep. So I ended up picking out all the other civilian schools which have recruited me, and I just liked the way Curry felt. I really liked the guys, and I loved the Coach Murph and everything mm -hmm. he was about. So of course. here I am, yeah, three perfect. years later. Um, so dating back to uh, back in your roots, you're from New Jersey, correct? Yes. So uh, New Jersey is known for being one of the better states uh, for lacrosse in the country. Uh, would you say that growing up in New Jersey has helped your career in lacrosse? I would say definitely. Uh, I went to Christian Brothers Academy, which is a uh, smaller private school. It's all boys. And we played in the same states group with a couple of teams that are perennially nationally ranked. Del Barton, uh, Seton Hall Prep, St. Peter's Prep, mm -hmm. Don Bosco. So yep. we've played some really good teams. We struck up some great rivalries. Uh, the, the area I'm from directly, the Shore Conference, has been getting better mm -hmm. exponentially since I was little. I've yep. seen the growth, so it's definitely been exciting, and it's been something new that I've been able to take with me here to Massachusetts and to have a little more experience and play with a couple more guys who ended up going to school to play lacrosse, mm -hmm. and it's just a really good time. Yeah, that's huge, especially bringing all your transferable skills to, to Curry now, which mm -hmm. is definitely huge. Uh, so, Clint, you are uh, what they call a long stick midi. Uh, what is your role on the field? And talk about your position a little bit. Uh, so my position is a little weird. It's got a funny name, but uh, <laughs> so I'm the uh, fourth long stick. The, the three defensemen have mm -hmm. longer sticks, and there's a fourth long stick that gets subbed in during the transition from offense to defense. So then my role is to cover usually the top offensive midfielder on the team, or, I mean, if things are getting really broken up, just grab a guy and cover him. And then uh, once we take the ball away, hopefully, or the shot clock expires, mm -hmm. we're going to be clearing the ball. And then it's important for the long stick midi, even though he has a long stick, and they don't always rely on guys like that to carry the ball, to be able to use both hands and really be able to make plays for the team in transition, help the offense get jump started. Absolutely. That's cool. Nice. Um, I understand that Endicott, of course, is one of Curry's biggest rivals. Uh, what is it about teams like that um, that make it a huge rival uh, when you play them? So, I mean, for me, there's always two games that are really circled on the schedule, really three. Um, it's always Endicott, Western New England, and Roger Williams. Yep, every um, year. Endicott is exciting because uh, my freshman year, we were actually, it was the first time in school history that we beat them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really play in that game. I was only a freshman, but I just remember standing out on the sidelines and being like, wow, these teams Wait, really don't insane. like each other. I, yeah. I love the atmosphere. I can't wait to be a part of it. Uh, last year was a little bit more disappointing. We came out a little slow out of the gate, but I mean, still can't beat the feeling of being at Endicott, at rival school, being on the field, just mm -hmm. trying to do everything you can to make sure Curry wins. Uh, with Roger Williams, we have ended up playing them uh, multiple times 
both years I've been here with the playoffs and with the season. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's been exciting too. One of my best friends wrestles down to Roger Williams, so it's always exciting to get to play them, yeah. have him come up for the game. It's all about connections. That's what it's about. Uh, probably the last question. Uh, so you're talking about wins and just teamwork and being on a lacrosse team uh, here at Curry. So last year, uh, you guys as tenor, you went 9-9. Nine and nine. You had a 500 record. Um, what are some changes that uh, have come to the team since last year that you want to bring into this year's uh, season, wrapping up, kind of? I think it's definitely a little bit of a different feel. I think we're just as excited. Uh, we did lose the leading scorer in school history, Devin Newell. Yep. He was a yep. bit of a security blanket for us on offense. If you could give the ball to Devin and you knew good things were going to happen. I think this year is going to be a little bit of a different team. It's going to be more of a balanced offense. Uh, I think our defense looks the best it's looked in my three years here right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty excited. And we're really looking to hopefully get 10 wins, be over 500 this Absolutely. year. Absolutely, yeah, cool. Uh, Clint, thank you for being here. We appreciate you uh, taking time to come in. Uh, best of luck next season. We'll be looking forward to seeing you guys. Um, as always, my name is Brandon Clay. We will see you next week on another edition of Curry Talks. Good afternoon and welcome to Curry Talks. I'm Drew DiMarino and this is a program where members of the Curry community learn more about each other. Today's guest is H.P. Oboiski. They are a junior here at Curry and are majoring in theater. Today they're going to help us learn more about what it takes to, to succeed here in the Curry Theater Department. Welcome H.P. Hi. Tell me, why did you originally come to Curry College? Well, um, I'll say my First choice wasn't Curry, but they ended up offering me a lot of scholarship money, so it seemed like a good deal. I understand that you've been in crew here at sorry. I understand that you've been in crew here at Curry. What's it like being able to build the sets and seeing what you've built being used on the show? It's pretty amazing, honestly. I think that most people would think that it'd be lots of hard work, you know. Some of the sets we've had here have been pretty extravagant. But you have uh, a great uh, tech director, Eli, who helps us build it. And, you know, having all your different friends in theater all get together and build them together, it's, it's actually can be lots of fun and you learn a lot. So it's been pretty amazing seeing it all come to life. I bet. What's it like being an actor in Curry Theater? I know in freshman year you were part of Commedia dell'arte show? Yes, um, we did a production called Sconarelle and I was part of the Commedia dell'arte troupe. It was lots of fun and it was my first semester here at Curry, so it was great to dive in right away and um, get involved in theater. What do you find interesting about acting? What caught your interest and made you want to pursue it in the first place? Well, I've always acted. It's probably one of my earliest memories was being in like an elementary school show of Peter Pan. I was a lost kid and I don't know, something about make-believe I guess and I always did theater with my friends so it kind of became a social thing and I've kind of just always wanted to do acting. I heard that there's a new director here at Curry. What's it like working with him and what kind of di different techniques does he use compared to like the old director? Well, our old directors are still here. Peter Carey um, was definitely a good inclusion to have in our mix though. He had a lot of um, different approaches that was very interesting to learn from. For example, he was very much a verb person. So what this means is when approaching acting, it wasn't necessarily basing off, oh, well, my character has to be angry right now, or my character has to be in love right now, or something. More basing it off of, what, what are they trying to accomplish here? Because you can't really pull an emotion out of thin air if the person, the actor, isn't really feeling it. It won't come across as authentic all the time. So if you're instead trying to um, intimidate someone, or you're trying to persuade, those are falling back on verbs is much stronger. That's one of the many things that I was able to learn from working with him. It was really great to have him. Sounds like you had a lot of fun together. <laughs> I understand that he was in charge of the Black Box performance. Could you explain the difference between the Black Box Theater and regular theater? Yeah, so here at Curry we do two productions a semester. We do the Black Box show and then the main stage show. The main stage show is the one that everyone thinks of when they think of theater, which would be 
a proscenium style theater where the audience sits in seats facing the stage and the actors all up on a stage with wings and such. Mm -hmm. But a black box show is one that is typically done on the ground and if there is an elevation that um, it's built, not just a stage that's already there, and audience sits on three sides of it. So it's a much different perspective with depth and such. Sounds interesting. Yeah. I know you, I know this year has been busier this year compared to other years at Curry College. What would, sorry. I know this year is busy in theater, putting on four different shows, but if this was a perfect world, what would you like to see Curry put, Theater put on first? Um, put on first? What do you mean, sorry? I mean, like, there are four different shows happening right now. Which one would you, like, prefer people see first? Well, definitely, um, you should see every show that Curry Theater does, in my opinion, as someone in Curry Theater. Um, that might be my bias, so. Um, I find that doing the black box shows um, first um, is a pretty good system because they're typically a little shorter, um, and main stage shows definitely need a long time to prepare because they tend to be like three acts and such. And if we want it to be a good show, which Curry Theater is dedicated to doing, then definitely need lots of time to put it together. Thank you, HP. We definitely want to have you back here one day. I'm Judy Reno. Thank you again for joining us another edition of Curry Talks. I'll see you again very soon. Good afternoon and welcome to Curry Talks. I'm Garrett Foster and this is a program where members of the Curry community learn more about each other. Today's guest is Rusty Whittemore. He is the assistant baseball coach for the team here at Curry and he's going to talk to us a little more about the team and what we can expect for the upcoming 2020 season. Welcome Coach Rusty. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so I know you're from Texas, um, but what brought you all the way out here to Curry? Well, my family and I wanted to move to New England and uh, Last fall, around this time, I started applying for baseball jobs. Came out here in December, had several interviews. Uh, really felt like this was a bet fit for me. I really like Coach Bordelotti. I like the direction of the program, his vision. I like the campus. I feel it's some place we can recruit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, I had a couple of opportunities. I picked Curry. I think this is an exciting time to be here right now. Yeah, nice. Um, so now that we've heard a little bit more about you, uh, let's talk a little bit about the season. Uh, coming off of a disappointing 11 and 24 record um, where the uh, expecting from the team or what are you expecting from the team uh, when it comes to on-field performance this year 11 and 24 is disappointing you know you look at the fact that we lost 11 games by one or two runs you know the expectations are high in my opinion mm -hmm. you know we lost a lot of those close ball games with young guys on the field we got a good recruiting class that came in this year, you know, to add to that, you know, get some experience. You, know, you yourself were a sophomore last year, mm -hmm. you know, and ended up winning the center field job. So we had a lot of guys who were young last year, stepped up. I, we're expecting big things out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, 11 wins ain't going to cut it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't move up here from Texas to lose. So I, I expect to win. I expect to win a lot of games this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely expect to win more than 20. Oh, yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You talked a little bit about uh, recruiting. So uh, when, talk a little more about uh, recruiting and uh, what goes into that. You have to recruit at a level to make your team better each year, mm -hmm. right? So we have to go out and find guys that are, again, better than where we are. Mm -hmm. So in the recruiting game, people are going to lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. We have to recruit guys that are better than what we have. That's how the team gets better, mm -hmm. right? But again, the people who are here need to step their game up get better so they don't get caught by the guys that are coming in. When you're bringing in good players that are pushing the guys that are already there, that's when the program gets better. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as recruiting goes here at Curry, I, I think there's a lot of positive. I think we got a beautiful campus. We're in a great part of town. Mm -hmm. You know, we're surrounded by million dollar homes. It's oh, a yeah. good education. So there's a lot of positives about Curry where I feel like I can recruit here. You know, and we're trying to go outside the area. You know, we got a couple of kids in from Texas this year. We're going to have more next year. Perfect. 
I understand the, uh, the team is also uh, involved in many off-field activities such as uh, volunteer work, community service. Um, can you elaborate a little more on that? Part of our expectations as coaches here are to have you guys more involved in the community, you know, and give back. So a few weeks ago we did the Monster Dash, you know, you guys were there in the rain. We did it along with the soccer program. We actually got an email back from the race director saying what a great job our kids did, what a great job. Curry Athletics, mm -hmm. you know, stepped up over there. So it's nice to hear back when we go out and do things and you guys take it serious and really put forth the effort. You know, we also do some winter clinics for local youth baseball players. Uh, it's coming up around the corner. So those are things that are expected of us as coaches here at Curry College. But we also expect that from you guys, you know, as young men, you, you want to give back to your community. Mm -hmm. It's important. Now, I assume there are some specific workouts during the off-season to help with gaining strength. What specific workouts and preparation do you expect from your players? Baseball movement specific things. You know, baseball is a rotational game. Mm -hmm. You know, you're swinging the bat. So having a strong core, you know, is a big part of it. Pitching, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing you can do in a weight room that replicates throwing a baseball mm -hmm. overhand. So, you know, you've got to do certain things to supplement your normal weight routine. Mm -hmm that are baseball specific movements, you know, really important. Uh, baseball with a throwing motion, shoulders, you know, I don't want to get into a whole scientific yeah. thing here, oh, but yeah. you know, throwing a baseball goes against the way your yeah. shoulder works. Gotcha. So it's not just the training of it, but it's also the proper recovery. Gotcha, you know, yeah, perfect, <laughs> perfect, gotcha. Well, thank you very much for your time today. I'm Garrett Fosher, and please join me for another edition of Curry Talks. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Curry Talks. I'm Kudam Flowery and this is a program where members of the Curry community learn more about each other. For today's show, we'll be looking into a theater program here at Curry. Today's guest is Mark Venus. He is a senior here at Curry, concentrating in theater, and he, and he is also one of the general managers of the theater production. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. Tell me about some of the experiences and background with the theater program during your time here at Curry. Well, I came in knowing that I was going to concentrate in theater. And so my spring semester, my freshman year, I did my first production. It was Black Box. And then every spring I've done a production since that. Last semester, you could have seen me in Legally Blonde. And that was also my first semester joining our supervisory board. And since then, that's helped boost me to being general manager now. Oh, wow. I know you have been into theater for a while, really for most of your life. You have been involved with the productions since you were a little kid. What was the moment you knew this was going to be something you wanted to study? It's kind of funny. There was never an exact moment. It wasn't a moment of knowing. It was just acceptance. Like everyone in my life, and myself included, just kind of accepted and knew that, OK, Mark is going to study theater at some point. We all just kind of figured it, and then now it's happening. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so you are not only one of the general managers, but you're also a costume manager and the stage manager, tell me, what, what are the main responsibilities of, of, uh, within the theater production? So with general manager, my job is basically supervising all the other departments and making sure that they're all getting their jobs done, and then stepping in and helping where needed, checking in with directors, making sure things run smoothly. Costume manager, it's measuring actors, it's finding costumes, making sure that the costumes meet the vision of the director. And for both costumes and stage managing, I'm only doing it for our main stage show this semester. Stage managing is all about making sure the stage is good. So our run crew is doing well, making sure our set is in place, and then making sure the actors have everything they need behind stage as well. Oh, wow. For the production this semester, Curry has already put on a black box show. Uh, <clears throat> what is the uh, box show? And we'll be putting on a main stage show. What is it like preparing for these two different types of shows and what are some of the differences? So the preparation is actually pretty similar. We do a black box show and a main stage show every semester. And behind the scenes, they run pretty similarly. It's the actual experience of going to see these shows that's different. Mm -hmm. 
black box. It's much more, I guess, immersive. It's much more intimate. We yeah. seat a maximum of 70 people. Main stage, it's bigger. It's the classic theater experience. Yeah. We seat a lot of people for that one, and it's usually a little bit longer as well. Oh, wow. While preparing for a show, it must be tough balancing your schoolwork mm -hmm. and making sure to put in a good production. How is that like for you? Uh, tough. Tough is the yeah. right word. It's a lot of knowing how you as a student work, and I know that I do my homework better at certain times during the day, mm -hmm. and I know that theater is going to take up my nights. So it's about budgeting your homework, it's about budgeting your time in the theater, and it's also about budgeting your free time and making sure you have free time to relax and breathe. Yeah, that's true. Theater here at Curry is open to anyone, available for anyone to join. With that being said, why would someone want to join theater? What are, the, some, of the, what are some of the benefits of joining? Two reasons, it's incredibly social. It's a great chance for, say, an incoming freshman to meet new people and really get this brand new experience and something that they love. The other reason, we're very student run. It's very hands on. Students literally do almost everything behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, theater here, theater is currently a popular curriculum for students here at Curry. What do you think attracts people to our theater program? Um, I think it's that hands on element. We like to say that we're 75% student run, mm -hmm. so we're doing everything behind the scenes. There's opportunities for students to direct. There's opportunities for students to write shows. We do props. We do our sets. We literally build our sets. If you want to learn to use a power tool like a saw or something, yeah. join Curry Theater. Ah, okay, thank you. Wow, well, it was really great to hear from you today, Mark. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn more about your experience with the theater program here at Curry. Curry. Make sure everyone goes and checks out the Curry Theater's production of Little uh, little woman running no November 16th through no 19th. It was a pleasure to have you today, Mark, and hopefully we can have you again. Thank you for having me. It was fantastic. Kuda. Thank you. I'm Kudam Clowry. Please join me again for another edition of Curry Talks. I'm Don Manna, and this is the program where members of the Curry community learn more about each other. Today's guest is Lori Lubeski. She's a professor at the Program for Advancement of Learning, or the PAL program, and is here to tell us more about that. Welcome, Lori. Hi, glad to be here. Now, for students who have heard of the PAL program but don't really know what it is or what they do, can you just explain that to me briefly? Sure. The PAL program is a program for students who have learning disabilities, and um, they come to Curry about probably about 25 percent of the curry population is in the PAL program at any given time 20 to 25 percent of the students um, so PAL is a special program for those students who come in and receive additional support um, for their study strategies time management organization and they work with a PAL professor individually and in small groups and help to be more successful at college. Absolutely, and I think it's a very great program here on campus. Um, so I know the PAL um, program has a summer PAL program um, where the students will come in July for about three weeks. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and the events that they do and why that program is so important to the PAL program? Sure, about half of the incoming freshman class will attend summer PAL. It's a three-week residential program and so they actually come into Curry. They live in the dorms, they eat in the cafeteria, they do many activities both in the, in the day and in the evenings and on weekends. So the main thing that it does is help the students get acclimated to the campus and they know where to go, they know where buildings are, they know who professors are. They take um, a mini course with the Curry professors come in and teach a mini course so the students get a sense of what it's like to be in a class before the semester actually begins. Typically they've had a choice between say psychology and English, fine arts, um, 
And so they take Professor Diulio has come in, Professor Carey has come in from the psychology department, from the English department. And then in PAL during the day, we work on their uh, metacognitive profile, have them understand how they learn and, and what they need to be successful at college. So it's a preview both academically and socially. So there's all kinds of activities in the dorms. They learn all the rules. You know, they have meetings with the RA, the residence life staff. Um, they know where all the services on campus are. They learn, you know, where the advising office is, where the library is, where they can study, where the computer labs are, where the health center is. So they really get a feel for what it's like to be on campus. And the main thing I believe is that they make the social connections. So they have time in the dorms. They learn that what it's like to have a roommate, which is often a rude awakening sometimes um, to be living with someone else. Um, but then there's all kinds of activities. They take field trips. They go to shows. Um, they go to sports events, the Paw Sox game. They go to um, improv shows downtown Boston. They go on sh uh, shopping trips and movies and activities in the evenings and weekends. So I think the main thing, though, is that they make a bunch of friends and they have friends when they come back to school in the fall. Absolutely. That sounds like a lot packed into three weeks. But I can see why it's such a big thing for the POW program. Um, so let me just um, skip ahead here. So you've been working at Curry for just over 20 years you now. Mm -hmm. um, so what is like the main things that this job has impacted you as a professor and an educator? So um, I think the main thing for me is that uh, the relationships with students and um, in PAL, we really, we work individually. Sometimes I'll have students from freshman year through senior year. So I, we really form close relationships with our students. Uh, actually, I'm still in contact with several of my students who have graduated already. And um, Absolutely. some of them who still live in the area, we talk, um, text. Yeah. That's really great. Um, thank you so much. You were so great. We're definitely going to have to have you on to talk more about your experience because it's been so much. Um, and for all of you, join us again for another edition of Curry Talks. Good morning and, and welcome to another edition of C C Curry Talks. This is the program where students of the Curry C C C C community get to know more about um, each other. I'm your host, Arthur Zatola. Today's guest is senior Tyler Milliken. He is a C C community major and is currently serving as 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 the um, station manager at Curry's own radio station WMLN. He's here to talk about the radio station on campus and and how students can get involved. Welcome Tyler to the show. Thank you for having me. So Tyler, why did you involve y yourself in radio and what exactly inspired you to you to to want to be a part of W M L N. Initially, when I came to Curry, I thought I wanted to only be a writing journalist. I didn't realize there were other avenues to it, such as being on air and talking. Uh, you know, after a year of my freshman year, just doing a lot of writing for the school newspaper, uh, I ended up getting a little bit more into radio as I got my own show. And you know, getting to talk sports, there's not too many things I enjoy more, so it was kind of the perfect match. Wow, that's great. What most students know is that there there is a live. DJ on air every day f from 7 a.m. to um, 2 a.m. What should students know uh, uh, about the radio station 
that the average student may not know about it and how and how can they get involved along with a lot of the other channels on Curry's campus such as television and uh, the newspaper fortunately radio can go beyond campus you know we have a pretty good radius going miles out that can go as far as Randolph for example so if you're looking to get that first step into the radio industry you want to see if you can get feedback from people who aren't even you know familiar with what Curry College is the radio station is the perfect platform for that because you know we get calls every day when we do shows from people who are just like we love your content and that's how you can kind of find your footing and realize what works and what doesn't work for you okay WMLN hosted its community involvement event synced up how did the execution of the um, event go and how did it benefit the face of the station. In all honesty, I've been here for a couple of the concerts we've thrown now in the different events, and I think Sigged Up is by far the most successful event we've had. Not only did we have, you know, hundreds of people watching the live stream at the time, we also had a great number of people there, uh, thanks to our music director, Brandon Clay, along with the coordinators, Brandon Baddock and Nick Betancourt. They organized the entire event flawlessly, going from food all the way up to great talent. All right. As a senior, you have constantly climbed Climb, climb the ranks uh, of becoming upper management at WMLN. Talk, talk about the broad responsibilities of having one of the highest positions at WMLN. Yeah, serving as station manager, I serve as our director of radio, Alan Frank. I'm his right-hand man. Uh, station manager encompasses just about everything, from you know hiring decisions uh, to what departments are working on, uh, to planning for the weekly radio meetings, and even scheduling the program for the station. So you know it's a pretty big responsibility, but you know I try to help out in every asset. I'm kind of the utility guy of the station. Uh, that sounds cool, and w with all the op opportunities here at Curry. What do you want to do with, with your degree in communications when you graduate from here? I'm hoping to dive deeper into the sports journalism field, you know, both in terms of writing and being on air. Um, not exactly TV, but more radio based. Uh, you know, I've gotten very comfortable getting to host a show every week for the past two years, uh, Pombo and Milliken, Tuesdays 4 to 7 if you want to tune in. Um, but overall, I just landed an internship in 98.5, uh, so I'm getting a chance to learn from some of the best. I'm hoping to just follow down those footsteps and get to talk sports each day. All right, that's great. And looks like we're going to have to r wrap it up. Thank you so much. For for your time t t today, t t t t Tyler. As always, I am I I, I am Arthur Z t t t t t Chola. Be sure to tune in next time to um to um another edition of Curry Talks. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Curry Talks. I'm your host, Brandon Clay, and this is where we talk to members of the Curry community to learn more about each other. Today's guest is senior captain of the Curry College football team, Teddy Flaherty. He is a communication major here and is going to tell us about his experience as a student athlete here at Curry. Welcome, Teddy. How are you doing? Good, man. First, we're going to throw back about four years uh, before you entered Curry College. You were looking at other uh, colleges, uh, especially around the <coughs> conference, like Nichols, Endicott, and uh, Western New England. Uh, tell me how you went about choosing Curry College to uh, further your uh, academic and college career. Well, I wanted to find a place that fit me. And uh, when I visited here, everything kind of felt right. Mm. Coach Bandini was very honest with me, very upfront. And I felt like he actually had my back. And uh, I was able to just kind of hang around with the players for a whole day. I hung around a workout. I ate lunch with them. And uh, I just clicked well with everybody. And it, it just fit better than most of the other schools. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw a couple games uh, with Western New England, Endicott, and nobody really gave me the same kind of feel that I got here. Um, and that's why I ultimately ended up coming here. You, you just talked about uh, Coach Skip Bandini. Uh, for those of you that don't know, he's been coaching here for 17 years now. And obviously, if you meet uh, Skip, uh, he's had <coughs> a winning culture in his tenor uh, at his time at Curry College. Uh, that being said, Teddy, uh, it still isn't easy being a student athlete, uh, balancing uh, athletics and academics as well. Um, so what was the transition from high school to college for you in terms of 
school workload and the game itself of football? Well, I was lucky enough to have a good group of high school coaches that prepared me pretty well. So when it came to the workload, I was honestly, I was probably ahead of some people. Uh, academically, we have a great support system. We have Bruce Weckworth and we're held accountable uh, pretty well. So coming in, it wasn't hard. It, re it really wasn't. Uh, we had study hall, we had a structured schedule. So I was able to really get in a group of things and get everything together mm. from the start. And that set me up for four years. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Uh, so you are a senior, as said before, and you were voted team captain alongside with Hunter Atwood, uh, the nose tackle, and the wide receiver Nick Villanueva, both seniors. Um, what did that mean to you as a senior uh, going into your final year as a colonel? Uh, what did that mean to you in terms of leading a team? And what were the responsibilities that kind of led behind being a captain for an entire football team? It was an incredible honor. It really was. To see people, you know, over 100 people trusted me with the responsibility of the team meant a lot to me. Uh, and it was something I always, not necessarily worked for, but always strove to be a, strive to be a leader in this team. Whether it was our off-season workouts, in-season spring ball, whatever it was, I always wanted to hold people accountable and try to make them better. Um, you know, I think a good player focuses on himself and a great player makes the people around him better. Absolutely. And that's something I always strive to be. <clears throat> and, um, you know, it was a big responsibility, but it was something I was willing to take on. It was something I think I wanted to take on and did pretty well. Uh, you know, you have to communicate with people. You have to lead people through everything. It's easy to be a leader when things are going great, but when things are, you know, going south or up in the air, who's first in line? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's when you find out who a real leader is, and it's something Hunter, V, and I really tried to embody this mm -hmm. year. Yeah, and that definitely brings you guys all full circle, especially yeah. when you're graduating now. And you yeah. guys, you know, it definitely brought it full circle. Yeah. Um, so talking about your senior season, obviously you're a captain too as well. Uh, you just finished your final game um, for the season. Talk about the season this year um, as you were a captain, but talk about the game itself and how this season went. Yeah, obviously we didn't get the results we wanted this year, but it was a great group of people to play with. Mm. Uh, there were really no egos all around, and we, we had some incredible competitive games, some real battles. A lot of games where we lost by, you know, two points or we won them in the last seconds. Absolutely, yeah. So it was definitely a fun season. Um, a great group of coaches, just great atmosphere the whole year. Mm. Obviously it didn't end how we wanted, but I think it's pretty bright future for mm. all these kids. We had a lot of great young guys around. And uh, as a career, it was very fun. We had some very high points, especially my sophomore year. Yep. Played in the conference championship, played in a, the New England Bowl. All, uh, we ended up losing, but that season was unbelievable. It was a great turnaround. It was a great group of people. And just to be able to play the game you love with your best friends, is uh, it's there's nothing else like it. Vouching for you as well today. I feel like you can agree that uh, if you meet any football player here, like they are a nice group of guys. Like yeah. your, your entire team, Yeah, awesome it's just group of guys. the culture we created here, and it's... Uh, we owe that to our coaches. Absolutely. Um, so the final, you know, just wrapping up real quick, um, any last final thoughts about your football career? What, what did you get out of this with your final thoughts? <clears throat> I think it built me as a person going forward, as a leader, uh, as a man, I guess. I learned a lot about responsibility, organization, hard work, and fighting through pain. And it's something you carry with you for the rest of your life, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. So I'm forever thankful cool. for that. Well, that, Teddy, thank you so much. That actually means a lot for coming in today. Um, we appreciate your, your time uh, for being a colonel and for leading our team to um, where we've been. So we appreciate that for real. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but again, as always, I'm Brandon Clay, and please join us again for another edition of Curry Talks. We'll see you next week. Good morning and welcome to Curry Talks. I'm David Montero and this is the program where members of the Curry community learn more about each other. Today's guest is Public Safety Chief Paul King. He is here today to discuss issues related to our safety across campus. Welcome. Thank you. Now, we know that there are many duties and responsibilities that come with being the Director of Public Safety. Can you describe your day-to-day -day schedule um, as Public Safety Director? As Public Safety Director, I'm tasked with setting the tone of the department, where we're going to spend our resources, where we're going to use our offices, what programs we're able to respond to and, and assist with. So most of my day starts off with uh, coming in, reviewing the reports from the night before, checking to see what events are scheduled for that day, um, assigning offices to the different programs that are being run and then checking our budgets and see where our budgets allow us to um, have a little flexibility 
perhaps uh, involved in programs that we do, such as Pizza with Public Safety for the freshman students, or our Vehicle Assist Program. Now, for those of you who are unaware, Mr. King has been the Director of Public Safety here with Curry College since 2017, and he has been a part of law enforcement for the last 34 years in the New England area. He was last the Chief of Police in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, before becoming Director of Public Safety here at Curry, where he works with the students. Now, what has public safety done in the last year to improve themselves with the relationships they have with their student body? Well, we've been working on several programs. First, we go to different student meetings, SGA, different affinity groups, and we want to hear what the students have to say. We want to know what the students are concerned about. We've also, um, like I said before, run incident uh, events like Pizza with the Public Safety. We run the vehicle assist program, so if you're here on some Friday night when you want to go home and your car won't start, we'll come out and jump it for you. It's just a service we provide that will help get you to where you have to go safely and securely. We uh, run different programs like our safety and security shuttle at night, which is operated by students. We run a safe uh, disability shuttle during the day, which again is operated by students. And these are all the different things that student groups have told us, listen, these are things we could use. Um, these are things that will help us get through college and get through our day. Now you've been a part of law enforcement for a good while now. What would you say is the biggest difference from your previous line of work and working here at Curry with the students? In my previous line of work, a lot of things we did were just quick responses. We would have a disturbance, we would respond to that disturbance, then we would move on to another call. Um, Curry College has actually given me and the officers in public safety the opportunity to interact with our students, to find out what will make them more successful and what will make us more friendly towards them. Um, we've been able to go to residence halls where they've had a disturbance and we know the students. We know the people so we're able to interact with them. They feel comfortable talking to us and we can work the problems out. Now one area of concern among students is the parking situation. With students complaining about not getting enough parking space and getting ticketed a lot, um, what is public safety doing this year to improve the parking situation? We look at parking every single week. Um, I've been dealing with the student government to try to improve our parking situation. We are not tied in public safety to any one system. I mean, right now we have North Campus, South Campus, Mid Campus parking, mm -hmm. faculty staff parking, and first year student parking. We're not tied to that system. But what we are saying is we need a system that will allow our students to come and park their vehicles on campus while at the same time allowing them to get to and from class safely. We have noticed using our cameras that the athletic field and the tennis court lot always appears to be open and there's always spaces there. So if you choose to come and drive around hoping for a closer space, it might be better just to park in one of those two areas that has spaces open all the time. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today, uh, Mr. King. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, we're definitely going to have to have you again sometime. Um, but for this edition of Curry Talks, I'm David Montero, and please join me again sometime. Thanks.